Hi, this is Christy with Sapphire Skies Farm. I'm just heading out to go get some chicken eggs and bring them in and then I'm gonna set the incubator. So let's go. Okay, are you ready to see these ladies and gentlemen? There are men as well in here. All right. Hey guys, did you save me some eggs today? Of course you did, of course you did. Let's see what we got. Oh my goodness, look at this silly duck. What are you doing, Missy? Okay, so this duck was sitting on some eggs. I haven't been really good the last two days about collecting the eggs. And so she was sitting on her eggs this morning and she didn't want to get off, so I just kind of left her, but I left her door open. And apparently she didn't want to stay on those eggs all day and she's out, so. After I grab my eggs, I'm gonna go help her get down with the other ducks and geese. Cause I don't want her to be sad. Hey mama, sorry. She's kind of in the like area where we just keep all of our scrap wood. And just over that little ledge right there is where the other ducks and geese are. All right, here's our eggs. Oh my gosh, you are the craziest chicken. Houdini likes to like climb up the fence. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do something so nice for you. I know what's going on. You want some worms, huh? So in this trash can here, we keep like their extra feed that doesn't fit inside of their um, feeder. And <laughs> Houdini is our black chicken. She's our escape artist. She can climb chain link fences. When we didn't have a roof on our run, she would sneak out. So she apparently really wants to get some of this deliciousness. Are you gonna come get it? What's up, Houdini? <laughs> they all love it. I'll grab this one too. Oh, hey, little girl. Are you running away? I think she'll go over and sit by those eggs now. Where'd you go? Oh, she's going down by the other ducks. I'm gonna have to go save her. Mmm, funny ducks. You just never know what these animals are gonna be up to, you know what I mean? I'm gonna reach in and grab these eggs. There's one. So I leave a golf ball in here because for some reason the chickens decide to lay their eggs by the golf ball. And if I don't leave the golf ball in there, they will lay them just anywhere inside there. Whoa, look at this mammoth. This is like a gigantic egg. It is so much bigger than these other eggs. You see that? I think this might be a double yoker. Look, so. There wasn't, there's two of this kind and there's two of the speckled eggs. There's only one of these. So this is probably a double yoker. She probably, this is, um, oh, this is Houdini's egg. She probably didn't lay one yesterday and then laid a giant one today. <laughs> oh, you're so funny, Houdini. What's up, big papa? This one here is Henrietta, and this is Big Mama. Oh, did you find her? <laughs> he was trying to get this guy that got caught on a... You gonna get it? Got caught on a cobweb. All right, so these are our egg laying breeds. Eggs. Now we need to go over there. This is our meat chickens over here. There are purebreds. Well, these females are all purebreds, but our rooster is not the same breed as them. We think that he's a well summer, but he was hatched up from a kindergarten class, so we can't be 100% sure. And then these are our babies. Hi, guys. Jade and Emerald are these light 
ones, and then those two over here are our Morans. And I can't remember what we named them. I think it was like hot chocolate and Hershey or something like that. I don't know. But they're gonna want some worms too, so I'll give them some worms. There you go. Mama's gonna go in. Hi, that was Eve. Let's get your eggs. Let's get your eggs. So I put this box in here and like cut out a little spot, hoping she'd lay her eggs inside there. I know you're moving closer to the door, but she keeps laying back there, you see, in the furthest corner. This is Adam and Eve. I'm gonna give them some worms. So tasty. So good. Here you go, guys. Everybody loves these mealworms. I give them that as like a distraction. I've never had one of my roosters of these two come after me, but you just can never be too careful. You know what I mean? Every time I get out, I'm like, yes! I escaped! So these two I put up here to remember that they are the purebred Red Rangers. We'll bring that in the house. Okay, and I better go collect those duck eggs before she sits on them any longer. They're not fertile, but she doesn't really realize that, you know? So I'm gonna go grab those duck eggs too. This is my duck pen. And Mama Duck. Hi. The two ducks that we have are Keki Campbells, and the kids rename them like on the regular. <laughs> Last night they decided they would name them Cotton Candy and Bubblegum. So, you know, that's their names this week. All right, let's go grab her eggs. Ducks are so gross, we give them clean water every night and it just gets all muddy and gross by the next morning. So I have to dump it every day. And she used to lay inside this dog house, but I saw her sitting back here. One egg, one measly egg. Funny girl. So Tyler must've picked up the eggs last night when he came in because I didn't get them yesterday. I can't believe she wouldn't get out of there this morning for one egg. So funny. Look how muddy duck eggs get. I found your egg, girl. I found your egg. Should we go back in with the ducks and geese? Come on, girl. You're totally cute. She's gonna be so excited to get in there and take a bath. They love taking a little bath every day. And eventually, I'm going to have this clawfoot tub in there to be where they take a bath every day. You're going to have to come back. Let me open your gate. Okay, I'll go this way. I'll go this way so you'll go in. Oh, dang it, I should have closed that. <sighs> no, hopefully the other ducks don't get out. Come on, girl. Come on. I should have brought my stick. Sometimes it helps to like guide them if I use a stick. <laughs> I'm so glad I could have you guys along for my duck chase. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. You're so funny. You're so funny. What are we gonna do? No, you can't go that way. I'm gonna go this way and hope that you go that way. I have my stick out of here. It just helps her like kind of see which way to go. I like put it on the side and then she knows to go that way. Oh, you're such a good girl. <laughs> so these are our khaki Campbells and then we are hatching out Welsh Harlequins. That'll be done in about 20 days. Don't come bite me. Don't come bite me. No, you just stay. 
Hi Emmett, I'm so glad. Where'd you go? So glad he likes to protect his little ladies. All right, everybody's safe and sound. So funny, you just never know what's gonna go on with these animals, you know what I mean? Oh, let's crack up. All right, let's get these eggs in and get them in the incubator. Okay, since I'm walking by it, I thought I would show you guys the space that we're working on right now. It's gonna be where our goat pen will be. Um, I'm really excited to get goats. They're coming in two weeks-ish, and um, I, I wanna make them a really cute little space to live, so I'll show you what we have going on here. Okay, so it's a hot mess right now, but these are um, what we're gonna use kind of as fence panels, and they're gonna go like da -da -da -da. across here, across there. We're gonna have one pen here, another pen here, and this is gonna be a milking station over here, and hopefully that's enough space for that. It's one of those things you don't really know until you're doing it, you know? I'm learning. So we're trying to make this all out of recycled materials. So these are actually from um, old shelving from the Postal Service, like U.S. mail, you know what I mean? So I think I'm gonna spray paint them gold and try to make it very Kate Spade. Cause why not have a stylish goat pen? Huh? We're also gonna use a bunch of um, wooden pallets and um, fence posts. No, not fence posts, fence panels. And yeah, I think it'll be really interesting to see if we can make this all from recycled material. The only stuff we won't use for recycled will be nails unless I can find some used ones somewhere that are in good shape. And we want to make sure our fence posts are really strong because the goats are stronger animals than like, like so far we only have birds, right? Ducks, chickens, geese, um, turkeys. So we want to make sure that the goats don't break their enclosure. And of course we don't want any predators to get in. So the posts will be, um, secure you know okay I'm inside now and let's show you what our incubator setup looks like so I've just got it up on a table and then this is it with the lid off and the eggs inside that I had collected before today and this is what it is it's a hubbabater 2370 and it is not plugged in yet but this is our um, hydrometer so it tells you the, um, this is how humid it is. And then these are the temperatures. So once this is inside the incubator right here, it will register as the out. And it should be quite warm, 99.5-ish. And then this is like the temperature of the current air. It's okay, and then these are the eggs we just collected. I wanna make sure before I forget that I write Red Ranger on these. Usually I use two hands, so excuse the mess. And then these are the Easter Eggers. So Easter Egger is any chicken with a blue jean. And our Americana, even though she doesn't lay blue eggs, she has the blue jean. So I just try to keep track of which ones are the, the pure red, red rangers. All right, and that filled up our incubator just perfect. And, hmm, what to do about this egg? Hmm, I should probably candle it and see what is going on inside there. Okay, well, it's definitely not an egg inside of an egg. If it was, it would be like really dark there. I cannot decide if for sure there is two yolks in there. Two, 
tricky to see. I was curious if there would be two egg sacs or air sacs. Definitely looks like there's an air sac here and an air sac there. So it's possible that there's two yolks in there and they're just free floating. Everything that I've heard is that it's really hard to get double yokers to hatch. I mean, yeah, that's like an air sac there. An air sac there. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so you know what? I'm just going to try it. I mean, there's an extra spot still in my incubator. I might as well see what can come out of this thing, you know? I feel like um, every time that I incubate, there's like something new uh, that like makes it different, you know? Like it's always a constant science experiment. So I guess this time it will be if this one will hatch and if it will be two inside there. I'm hoping when a candle at about 10 days that I will be able to see if there's two growing in there or not. And who knows, maybe it won't even be viable. You never know. Okay, so as far as which way to put this, since I saw that there was an air sac on either side, I don't know, this side seems a little bit more like the other tops. I don't know, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. So I took the egg turner and the little grate and moved them over here. And this is what it looks like inside. So uh, what I do is I put water in the outer cell and if the humidity is too low, I can always add more water to the other cells. Um, and if it's too high, I can always um, empty out the one cell. Just adding water. Try not to spill it everywhere, like I just did a little bit. So my last hatch, I had an egg break on um, probably the very first day. And so I did what's called a dry hatch. I was really worried that the incubator would get full of bacteria. And so if I had kept a lot of moisture in there with like whatever egg had broken, um, I was worried that a lot of bacteria would grow. I was worried that a lot of bacteria would grow and my eggs would end up all dying. So with the dry hatch, the I, I didn't add more water at all through the whole experience, even the last three days, which is when you're supposed to add a lot of water. Um, but I figured either I was gonna have eggs that all died from like overload of bacteria or some of them maybe wouldn't make it. And it turns out that I only had maybe eight eggs that didn't survive. So out of 30, 41, out of 41 eggs, I still got a decent amount of chicks. So that's pretty good. A few of them weren't fertile when I candled. So in the end, I think we ended up with 28 baby chicks, which is much better than none, you know? But I was really scared. I was like reaching out to everyone I knew that were incubator people and incubator people. Hmm. You know what I mean? I was reaching out to anyone I knew that had incubated before to see what they thought I should do and None of them really knew what to do, so I guess that was my science experiment last time. Okay, so we have our eggs all in. We have the egg turner in. There's a little slot here for the cord to come out. Okay, now our lid is on, and same with the bottom. We need to make sure that there's the egg turner cord is there. Ta-da! Many, many eggs. Okay, now I'm putting my hydrometer in there. I just let it set right on top of one of the eggs so it can still rotate, but it doesn't get stuck in it. Sorry, it's hard to see it, but. All right, time to plug it all in. Okay, 
Okay, so this is my first time putting this right here. Um, we've had it like in the kitchen. So this is my first time putting it by this um, window and it turns out this plug doesn't even work. So I have to now move, I have to now move the whole table. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, I got it moved and now it's on. So this is the current temperature, which is like what the air outside is and that will warm up once it hits 99.5 just showing it's showing the same temperature um, once it warms up inside there it will start the process of turning these eggs into baby chicks so of our last hatch we kept um, I think it was six of the Red Rangers to grow and have them become our meat birds and then we kept one bird that was just like cinnamon colored. I don't know how to explain that any better, but I've never seen a chick this color. And we're just interested to see what he turns out. We've hatched out probably four batches already of these same chickens. And this is the first time we got one that was cinnamon. So let me go show you what he looks like. Cause, or she, hopefully it's a she. Cause if it's a he, he will be dinner. Um, so hopefully she will turn out to be cute when she grows up. Hey ladies. Okay, so these are the six that are the Red Rangers. Mom and Dad, Adam and Eve. And this is my one that's brown. Isn't it so cute? So it has just like a tiny hint of gray in the leaves, in the leaves, <laughs> in the wings. And so this is the one that's cinnamon and it has just a tiny bit of gray in the wings. So I can't tell if it's from Big Mama, who is a gray Americana, or if it's from Henrietta, no, sorry. Or if it is from Houdini, our all black bird and just somehow got the genes to be more brown. But I like it. Hi. Thank you, little birdie. So this is the one that the kids like the most. And so we will keep it. But I did warn them that if it turns out to be a boy, I'm not keeping it. Because purebred boys are the only ones that get to have a future home in our farm. Isn't that cute? And these are the duck eggs. They have about two weeks left till they hatch. They ironically will hatch the same day as we get our goats. So, you know, why not add more crazy all at the same time? For ducks and geese, I have to spray them with a squirt bottle every day while they're incubating several times a day because they do much better in a much more humid environment, but for some reason not a constantly humid environment. Um, like when the mom goes to take a bath, she will come back and she'll be all wet and she'll sit on her eggs. And they also get a break during the day. So I had just taken that lid from this incubator downstairs and used it to candle that chicken egg, that one that might be a double yoker. So I'm just putting this lid back on this incubator and um, I'm gonna give it a little squirt. So I almost forgot to give it a squirt. That's it. Pretty exciting, huh? Just a little squirt down. Make sure that stays closed. It's always tricky to see on these, but the temperature cooled down a little bit because I had taken the eggs off. It says 88.5, and currently the humidity is 90 because I sprayed 91. I sprayed um, the water in there, but it will quickly go back down to somewhere in the 40s or 50s. This morning, I opened up this bag full of loquats and started peeling them and pitting them. And we did some juicing and I'm gonna can some of them as halved loquats. So we'll drink the juice for dinner tonight. And I'm gonna head out to the garden. <laughs> this is my current garden gate. It has a pumpkin that just was a volunteer that's decided to grow across it. And it makes me laugh every time. So I may end up with a pumpkin.
<laughs> all the way up my garden gate. You just can never be too sure of these things. Look at it going <laughs> it's up and down, coming into my artichoke. Maybe it'll grow in with a cauliflower. I found a cauliflower head for me today. <gasps> Look how exciting. I love cauliflower. This cauliflower um, had a whole bunch of slugs in it and that's what ate up all the leaves. But then I found the slugs and you can see these leaves are looking some better in the middle. This one is doing better, but it was like totally eaten down to nothing. Here's um, another volunteer over here. It's got a million little tomatoes on it. So funny. I love my little volunteers, you know? I absolutely have no idea what variety it is, but. This is where my corn is growing. And we just planted the green beans a few days ago. And they're already starting to come out. I love how green beans have a <laughs> bean on the outside. And they grow, it's pretty cool. Do, 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 do. And we just put fresh bunny poop all over in here to really feed the corn. This will be a three sisters garden. It'll have corn, green beans, and squashes and melons. So many little, little tiny green bean seedlings emerging. So fun. This is one of my favorite parts of the summer. <laughs> it's having a three sisters garden. I love it. But uh, I came out here to get with some kale and maybe just hopefully there's a few strawberries left. The kids came out and ate a bunch, but maybe there is still some. Gonna fill up this bucket with that kale. Ta-da! So now my bucket looks like a kale bouquet and my kale has been trimmed way down. So any of this that I don't actually eat, the animals would be more than happy to eat. So this bed didn't have very many red ones. It had one little one left I grabbed. But I went in and there's a lot that are green and getting bigger, see? I propped them up with these forks. And if I manage to get them before they get red, then the bugs can't really get to the fruit as easily. And I get more solid production. Because this crazy lady is trying for a completely pesticide-free garden this year. I'm putting out traps, but I'm not spraying anything. Um, and all my traps are like uh, the oil traps for earwigs and um, some beer traps for slugs. And what else have I done? I don't know. I have a video for it. I'll link it at the bottom. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to really use my animals for a lot of pest control this year. The ducks and the chickens. And otherwise, sometimes I come out and pick it all off. Pick all the bugs off like those slugs by my hands, you know? I spy a red little strawberry. That was not propped up. So I'm going to prop a bunch more up while I'm here. Check it out. My little tadpoles are turning into froglets. So this guy's gonna have to go into the pond tomorrow morning. I think there's another one back there that's starting to look like it's turning. Let me see if I can find it. Oh yeah, the one right in front of this white rock. Right, right there. <laughs> Funny. Oh, oh, look at him go! Super cute. <laughs> so I want frogs in my garden because they will eat a lot of bugs. And hopefully my ducks don't eat all of the frogs. <laughs> uh. This is 
been fun. We've really enjoyed having these little tadpoles in the kitchen. <laughs> and we've probably released already like half of them into the pond. It's fun. I thought you might like seeing what I'm putting on my salad. So I've got about five or six strawberries I found and then some nasturtium flowers and some borage flowers. And then I'm gonna add some loquats and some poppy seed salad dressing. Yum! So last night I canned up a bunch of carrots. Doesn't that look so tasty? So good. So these are carrots packed in, they're just baby carrots, and they're packed in water, brown sugar, and orange juice. And I just followed the ball recipe for canning because um, I like to use tested recipes so I know that no one in my family will get botulism. And this was my first time using the um, pressure canner and I was super intimidated. I like couldn't even handle being in the same room. I had to go out while it was canning. But I survived it and so did my kitchen, so that's good. So tonight I'm actually going to make um, some apple pie filling and can it. Um, that's my job tonight. And if I have time, I'm gonna try to do some loquats and simple syrup, but that's if I have time. Because I think this, like I always underestimate how long it takes me to do all this canning stuff, you know? But gotta save it, save it, save it, so you can use it later. Because I have an overabundance of apples right now, so these will get saved. Well, it's been a long, hard day, and now it's time to say goodbye. But I hope you got a chance today to get outside, get your hands dirty, and enjoy some sunshine. Until next time, bye.